Coming up this month, how to live a good life with my book of the month for October. Hey everybody, it's Harry Cleveland here from thoughtgym.com, here helping you become that superhuman leader I know that you can be, giving you everything that you need to take your life to that whole new level. And this month, I'm sharing, just like every month, the tips, the ideas, the tools that are gonna help take you there. And just like I've been doing once a month since the beginning of 2016, I am now sharing with you my book of the month for October, which is this one, given to me by a great friend of mine, Erlen, so thank you. It is called A Guide to the Good Life, The Ancient Art of Stoic Joy by William B. Irvine. So Stoism is a branch of philosophy, a way of life, a philosophy for living, really. So it's been around a couple of thousand years, just over, came from the ancient Greeks, when uh, Socrates, uh, one of the most famous philosophers out there, he passed away, lots of, he had lots of students, they all branched out, they all took their own schools of thought on his training and everything else they'd learned, and different schools of thought or philosophy arose. And Stoism is one of those schools of thought, and, uh, and it's one that really resonates with me. I've been reading this book for the last couple of weeks, I think it's fantastic, it's a really easy grasp on what Stoism is, and how can you use that to lead a good life. So it gives various principles uh, that Stoics believe in, and one of them which goes really counterintuitive to a lot of personal development, a lot of goal setting that we think about, is that of negative visualization. Yes, negative visualization. So we're all taught about visualizing exactly what we want to happen, how we want it to happen, but actually, and this is a practice that I've been doing on and off for a while, I didn't realize it was kind of part of Stoism, but it's to think about things as they could go wrong. And so visualizing when things don't go right. Your presentation doesn't quite have the technical capabilities that you asked for, i.e. there's no projector or the laptop dies on you. Thinking about how you will cope with that will help you cope with it in the actual situation. So you'll know exactly what to do ahead of time. You won't wait until the situation before you have to cope with it. And the other thing that um, negative visualization brings about, which they talk about more specifically in this book, is this idea that you will then be grateful and appreciative of your present circumstances as they are arising. So imagine you've got this amazing sports car and you practice negative visualization on it, i.e. you think about a time when maybe you don't have it anymore, maybe you've lost your fortune and you've had to sell the car, or perhaps maybe you've started a family and you have to kind of get a nice big people carry instead. By thinking about the times that you don't really want to think about, but practicing that negative visualization, it will help you appreciate the moment you've got right now. Especially important when it comes to relationships. Relationships don't necessarily last. I mean, someone may move away, someone may pass away, there may be some situation, but ultimately nothing really lasts forever. But by visualizing the thing that you don't want to happen, not necessarily repeatedly, repeatedly to make it happen, but just by patterning that through, you're able to cope with what's going on right now in a more grateful and appreciative way. So that really called to me, that negative visualization. One of the other things that they talk about in Stoic philosophy is that idea of practicing being uncomfortable. So whether that might be that you practice abject poverty or homelessness or something like that from a period of time, it might be just one night of homelessness, which I know my friend wants to try out next summer. Um, or it might be maybe living on just a few pounds a day. And what that will do is that that will take away the fear that should that ever happen, that you'll be afraid and you won't be able to cope because maybe you do cope much better than you think that you could. So therefore that fear of maybe losing your current job and going for that business venture or following your passion, it's not as fearful because you know, hey, I can survive on beans and toast and living in my, I don't know, sister's spare room and spending five pounds a day for a few months or a year or two because I practiced it and it wasn't that bad. So this is just one of the principles that they talk about in uh, Stoic philosophy. Like I say, really easy to read book, very straightforward language, because a lot of other things, if you read like Marcus Aurelius, famous Stoic or Seneca, I think they're a little bit more challenging to read. But this is very practical, very simple. Have you read this book? Do you know much about Stoism or Stoic philosophy? Do let me know in the comments section below. You can get a copy of this on Amazon. I'll put the link down there or any decent bookshop, I'm sure. 
Um, but please do reach out to me. Let me know what you think of this book, any of the other books that you've been seeing in this series. I'd love to hear from you, absolutely. Remember to subscribe. Until next week, remember to stay strong, stay super. Bye-bye.